Party on, dudes! Keanu Reeves is one of those actors that when you think about him, you think about him kicking ass. He's quiet, he's handsome, but he also gives off this underdog vibe. He's always in action movies, and he always looks so put together, like he's got everything under control. You see him, you think martial arts, you think guns. What kind of movie is this? What movie is this? You definitely don't see no simp, but oh boy, do I have a weird taste of movie for you guys. This is a Dumb Movie Monday, but honestly, it should have been on Dumb Movie Monday because oh my god. Cringe, cringe, I love Keanu so much. Everyone loves Keanu, but good heavens, good night. This is one of the worst movies I have seen him in to date. The movie is called Knock Knock, <laughs> and we're gonna... <laughs> Oh, you guys got to go along the adventure with me. If you want to see it, it's available on Netflix. It is a 2015 movie and it fell under the cracks and just recently came up because Netflix is like, oh my God, everyone's home now. We're running out of things to show them that are new. So uh, bring it back the cringy movies. It's still something and they still want entertainment. So they'll watch it. And exactly that is what happened. By the way, I have not heard of any of these studios, which is probably one of the telling signs before watching this movie because I was like, wait a minute these people and um now i know why not to say that any indie studio film producers are like really bad if you don't know their names but usually if they're good you get to know their names quite quickly it's been 2015 since this movie came out i have not seen any other movie that any of these people have put out and, and maybe i haven't just fell into the cracks but even asylum is more known than this and they make nothing but stupid movies. So the film takes place near Hollywood. So we know that Keanu or whoever lives here is pretty wealthy. We get some nice unnecessary establishing shots. Not like we're ever going to see the landscape. But they want you to get a feel for how peaceful the area is. I will say this. Keanu is the supposedly more popular actor in this movie, but he is one of the worst actors in this movie because <laughs> there is a certain range that Keanu can play and uh, this isn't it. The story starts by panning through the house and you see a family portrait and oh no, he's holding a freaking dog. Looks like a French bulldog. And immediately I had to go do the dogs die because I, I don't want to, I, I just want to be prepared. And whew, I was able to watch it in peace. And Eli Roth's good too. It's just like, I don't know what was with the horror theme with this. Apparently it was supposed to be some horror. I was expecting it to be something kind of like John Wick. Boy, was I wrong. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. So he has a shoulder injury and there is really no reason for the character to be written that way. I mean, I know that people in real life have that and it, it, it is realistic because you could tell he's a normal person who's had injuries and surgeries on his shoulder. But aside from something that happens later that's really not that necessary and a way for him to get beaten down again, the shoulder injury is kind of useless unless they're trying to relate to people who did have shoulder injuries. So when you're watching it, you can cringe. You can feel the seething agony of somebody else who, okay, I don't want to talk about it. I'm feeling weird. Never. Just a little bit, just to clean it up. I'm not cutting it. But you... Can you just listen to the man when he says he doesn't want to cut his hair? He means he doesn't want to cut his hair. What if he asked you to cut your hair? I love the way it's long. Yeah. Okay, fuck that shit. I'm sorry. This is why I'm never having kids ever. Because, like, I understand you don't want to feel bad about locking them out of your room. But, you know, can you, can you not? Like, we're a married couple. Can you not just barge into a room unless you want to see daddy's dick swinging and mommy getting pounded? Like, seriously, I think that they should just keep going when the kids come in the room to teach them a lesson. That's what your bitch ass gets for not knocking first. I want cake for breakfast. Wow. Chocolate with sprinkles. <laughs> this is where it gets really bad. Oh my god. Okay, so when I was watching this, I was trying to get into it. Like, you see Leonardo DiCaprio with kids, right? And you believe that he's a father. Is he a father? I don't know. I don't think he is a kid. Hold on. I gotta look that up. Okay, so he does not have kids. In all his time in Hollywood, the guy does not have kids. You know what? Good for you, dude. Good for you. So much more freedom. I'm not trying to make anybody else feel bad about having kids. I mean, come on. Some people think kids is a gift. Kids aren't for everyone. Just say. But in the few roles I've seen him in where he was with kids or... <laughs> okay. I'm sorry. That, that 
I'm just remembering something my partner said. It's so inappropriate, but I'm going to take a risk. But yeah, what I was going to say first before I say that is in the few roles he's been in with kids that I can remember, he feels like a father. He looks like someone who's had kids. He acts the role very, very well. Keanu just looks awkward. And my partner said... Please don't take this the wrong way. We're joking. But he's like, the reason why Leonardo DiCaprio is so good with kids is because he dates them. He doesn't actually. He, he only dates 20 year olds, but it, it's a freaking joke. But I thought it was hilarious. I was like, wow. Wow. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, um, yeah. Anyway, this, this was, <laughs> dare I say it, very uncomfortable to watch Keanu out of his element. I was... My whole body was vibrating in discomfort watching this. Like, really, Keanu? Really? Like, I mean, there's only one. You can't even blame him. Even the woman, she's not a great actress either. But at least she's a little better with the kids. But him, it's just, he doesn't feel like their father. He feels like someone who just slept with their mom and he's staying over for the night. Chocolate with sprinkles. <laughs> My favorite. You guys. You like it? I love it. Mwah. I love it. Thank you. Mom, hey, okay. cake, 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 cake. The kids are so adorable and also very disciplined. They didn't even eat any of that cake and saved it all for their father. Kids aren't great actors either, but you know, you know, you could excuse that a little bit. But this whole family dynamic is just making me feel the willies. And then it gets worse. Sorry. Mm. Jesus. The frick did I choke on? These nuts. Ha! <laughs> Got he! <laughs> Shut the fuck up! Monster made kids disappear. And? Monster wanna finish what we started. Too late. The kids are awake. Monster sad. Oh my god, dude. Seriously. F seriously? First of all, the wife's an asshole. Like, this is why a lot- mm, not gonna- mm -hmm. I'm gonna get some people coming after me for this, but I'm commenting on the events of the movie, so, you know, it, 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 it really made me feel bad because I like to tango. I don't know who on earth does it. There's some people who are asexual and they don't like to, but I really like to. Let the kids come in and we have a few minutes and you, they're gone and you not give me a few minutes. You get me worked up. You, mm, oh my God, slap the shit. That's what I was going to say. This is why some men cheat. Like, that's what I'm saying. That the, the, the romance isn't supposed to be gone when you have kids. And they're rich enough that they have time. It's not like she has a fucking deadline. Why are you leaving him hanging like that, my guy? And then what she says next makes me excuse most of what happens in this movie. Not to mention, she was going to the beach to have a vacation with the kids for a few days. Honestly, I didn't expect this movie to be this. I didn't even know what I was walking into. I thought it was going to be an actual horror movie and then it turned out to be something completely different and, you know, freaking weird, but I could understand some of it. The kids are awake. Monster sad. I'm sure Monster can wait till Monday. Monster been waiting three weeks. Yeah, but with the kids and my exhibition, I cannot keep everybody happy all the time. Monster been waiting three fucking weeks, my guy? You've not had Kunungu with your wife in three freaking weeks? What the fuck? Weeks? Did they mean to say weeks or days? Weeks? Hold that sh- hold that sh- mm. Wait, hold on a- hold on a minute. Three weeks, like- 21 days? Like almost a whole fucking month? You've not thrashed the leaves with your jungle monkey in 21 days? You fucking, it, is she doing someone else? Cause like, I know some people are like, she has better things to do, bitch. I don't know why that made me so mad. That whole part just made me so freaking mad. So whatever you see in the rest of this movie, understand that had they been working on that, which he obviously was trying to, it might not have happened. Monster have been waiting three weeks. Aww. Yeah, but with the kids and my exhibition, I cannot keep everybody happy all the time. Whoa, 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 whoa. Monster doesn't want to start a fight. Monster, your prey is cheating. She said, I cannot keep the kids 
and everyone happy all the time with the kids and her exhibition. So what, he's not a part of that goddamn equation anymore? What the hell? And then women have a nerve to get mad. Like, I understand if the woman's giving you everything, and then you still go outside, and you hightail it, and you guys have an agreement or whatever. I can understand why she'd be upset. Like, I mean, the first thing is you don't give everything. You want to keep it interesting. But three weeks is a very long time, especially right after you worked him up already. Maybe lock the goddamn door and teach the kids some discipline so you don't get out of the mood. Jesus Christ, why am I so freaking mad? And then he's saying sorry, like he did something wrong. He clearly wasn't fighting with her. He's a little bit frustrated and I can understand that. My ass would have been out that door. I would have been like, bitch, okay, all right, you do you. Your art and shit is more important. I'm gonna go take a walk. You know, as a matter of fact, since we can wait till Monday, I think I'm gonna leave for the weekend and go take some time to myself while you deal with all of this. So I'm not in the way. How about that? Okay, sorry, me neither. I promise we'll finish this as soon as I get back. Bitch! Oh, monster happy. Monster happy. Monster very happy. Are you though? Maybe my drive is just unusually high, but that whole scene made me so freaking flustered. So the family's getting ready to take a trip to the beach and they decide to leave the dog because they claim that, you know, daddy doesn't want to be left alone. Well, the kids want to take the dog, but the mother's like, we want daddy to stay with Monkey so Monkey can keep him company. Then this guy named Lewis comes in and he's really adorable. He is the art assistant, I guess, in charge of handling the wife's art. Keanu has to stay home because he is an architect and he has a project that he has to do. With how in demand he is, notice that he still finds time to take care of his wife and be attentive to her, even though she doesn't return the favor. They go off to the beach house and leave him all alone. I wonder what could ever go wrong for a man who hasn't had sex in three weeks, whose wife obviously isn't very attentive to him, even though he loves her so much, is all by himself. Who's there? Yes? Oh no! Well, hot damn. All dripping and wet and tight. Ha! Huh, nothing could ever go wrong here, could it? Now, um, <laughs> there's this movie called Misery. I haven't really watched it, but everyone knows of it. And uh, something like that kind of happens in this movie. I thought that when he opened the door, someone was going to bash him in the face, but that's not what happened. Instead, it's every man's worst nightmare, but like dream come true and worst nightmare at the same time. He tries to be a good man, but the girls, everything happens to work out in such a way that he has to invite them inside. Note, he doesn't have to invite them inside, but he feels like an asshole if he doesn't because they claim that every other house was out and his was the only one. The taxi just dropped us here. We've been walking around for like 20 minutes. Yeah, we feel all like dying. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm afraid I can't help you. Okay, so look, if I was at home alone and my boyfriend or husband, you know, was, wasn't was there and some dripping, wet, freaking tall-ass stallion, you know, like, I mean, okay, we're gonna say, well, for, for girls, we're, so you're not supposed to let strangers in, period, you know? But let's say we knew him. Let's say it was a neighbor from somewhere or someone that everyone knows. You have surveillance and everything. You just know this person's not a serial killer. He's obviously a person of, you know, something. It's say it's from my class or whatever. I know him, which is more of a reason not to do it. But he's at my door and gives all the same excuses. I haven't had it in three weeks. In three weeks, which for me is a very long time. That that would just not happen. And then this shows up at my door while everyone's away and it's nice and quiet and I'm high or sort of. I know that the moment I let that into my house, we're gonna have some issues. I know that as soon as I let that into my house, it's pouring wet outside. You know, I can call an Uber for you, but then he's like, do we, I leave him wet outside? You know, you're an adult. You should have brought an umbrella. You should have been prepared. I'm not letting you inside my house because the thing is he could be a serial killer. Those girls could be serial killers. And especially in this climate, that is the worst thing a guy could do. Because then they could just claim you did something that you didn't do. You know what I'm saying? But then there's the other part of it that's like, God damn. Whoo. Yeah. Haha. <laughs> okay. So, so, so here's what we're not gonna do. You're not coming inside this house, brother, brother. Nope, nope, nope. Here goes this door in your face right now. Whoo, I'm safe. 
And I understand it's harder for guys because women are more like, you know, like the weaker sex and you feel this thing that you need to protect them. But, you know, this is too good to be true. And just like, it's like that freaking vampire meme, you know, let me in. And then he ends up doing that after trying and it gets so uncomfortable and tense and it's kind of hot at the same time because the tension is like, whoa, over 9,000, dude. But... <laughs> I swear this was supposed to be some freaking thing on, on P Hub. Bless you. <laughs> yeah. The thing you had the Kleenex right by the door. Well, if you guys want, you can come in and use my phone. Stop! Right. Stop! Yes, uh, Actually, uh, would you mind if we just use your computer for a sec? I'll come bring it outside. It has Wi-Fi, so you don't need to be connected to a landline. <laughs> this poor man. Oh, Jesus Christ. Almost like they picked his house on purpose to trip him up. It's like a test. Like, at this point, if I was the guy, I would be like, I wonder if my wife sent these people. Like, I wonder if this is some kind of freaking test that crazy bitches play. Because this is, this is just very <laughs> freaking odd. So, of course, his stupid ass lets them in. And then things just start spiraling from out of control. They start talking about their escapades and how cute he is. They start getting handsy. And at that point, bro, they're already in your house, you know... Now, if you upset them, they can call the cops and, you know, now you're in a very shitty situation. Two girls and it's your word against theirs in Hollywood. What was my guy thinking? I would have been on the phone and been like, honey, um, there are these two broads in front of the house. And she would have been like, of course, rightfully so. Uh, don't let them in. I would be like, here's a jacket. And uh, here's a computer. You can use it. And if they run off with it, you know what? Whatever. Like I said, this or this is not coming inside my house. Whichever form of the word you want to use when my partner's gone. Like, that's just, just asking for trouble. This poor man. And he's trying to be nice. Like, he feels like he's in a rock and a hard place because he's like, okay, I look like an asshole if I tell these girls that, you know, they slam the door in their face and be like... <laughs> deuces bitches <laughs> should have brought an umbrella but here's the thing and i've learned this because i have that habit of being way too nice sometimes too it's in my nature it is so much better and we save ourselves so much trouble if we're mean sometimes like you know how many conversations i couldn't get out of because i was too nice and then next thing you know i'm sitting on the doorstep with somebody telling me their sad sob story or someone now wanting me to babysit their kids or some foolishness like that or being stuck in the supermarket because everyone feels like i'm approachable because I'm small and like ooh, Disney character maybe she's my shrink she must be fun to talk to commence talking with her for two hours in the middle of a Walmart like she has nothing else better to do with her life and me the idiot just standing there like yeah <laughs> Jesus Christ and then they have the audacity after like 40 minutes they're like I'm sorry I hope I'm not taking up too much of your time and I'm like no no of course not and I'm like shh Shit. I've gotten a lot better with that. And it's really good. Like if I go with my partner somewhere, he's like, hey, we got to go. We have that thing. Remember? And I'm like, oh, yeah. Sorry about that. But when I'm by myself, it's like doubly hard. And if I'm frustrated, seeing this at my door is not going to help. He brings them tea. He takes their clothes and puts in the dryer because they asked. They just start making little excuses here and there as to why they should stay in his house longer. Now they have nothing underneath those little fluffy polar bear kilts. He tries to tell them about his job and he He's trying to make nice by having conversation with them. They start touching him and he's like, oh, Jesus. They start touching his wife's stuff. Right. Now you seem old. <laughs> oh my God, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. <laughs> call the uber for them and it's gonna take 45 minutes just enough time but instead of taking the option to do it right away he's really trying to be a good guy he does love his wife and he's like uh so yeah anyways they start making sexual comments and he's like huh how interesting so anyway 
This woman is Barcelonian, just like his wife, and she's like, no one will know. And at this point, you can tell that it's much harder for him to fight it off, even though he wants to. Honestly, the whole cheating prospect fantasy is so freaking hot. This movie's great. And the tension part too was like, you can, you can understand exactly what that character is feeling. And they set it up just right. His wife turned him on that morning. He hasn't had it with her in over three weeks. Two beautiful girls show up at his door, wet and dripping and helpless. They obviously want to fuck this guy. It's so freaking obvious. They're making it so obvious. They keep touching him. They keep sitting by him. They keep talking about things that are making him want to do it. Like, it's like he's set up to lose. It would be so hard for normal people to pass this test. And that's why we don't let people through the fucking door. His Uber that he ordered for them is here and the girls are nowhere in sight. Where could they be? He starts getting their stuff together and he's like, girls, Jesus Christ, the Uber's outside. Come on. They're in the bathroom. He's like, what are you guys doing in there? And then he's like, you know what? Um... All right, I'm coming in. I'm not looking. And then he goes in and they have no intention of leaving his house. Guys. All right, I'm coming in. I'm not looking. So excuse me. Like I said, they have no intention of leaving. They basically molest him. And then they're like, don't worry. Your wife doesn't have to know. I bet you never had two girls do this to you before. Mm, little saucy thing. Look at you. Then they start going down below the bridge. And at this point, his instinct to breed is so freaking high at this point. He's already frustrated that, man, even me talking about it, I'm frustrated. I can't totally blame him. Yes, he's an adult and he knows the repercussions, but at that moment, he's not thinking about that. I've seen other men, like, fly out of the situation, like, barely making it. But it's not just one woman, it's two. He even says that he's happily married and he loves his wife. Just relax and enjoy it. <laughs> Happy, Happy Father's, Father's Day. Day. He wakes up in the morning or in the middle of the night and they, they've had a very, very long session of just nothing but fun. It's almost like he's in heaven, the best gift he could ever have. But it's very short lived because he wakes up to a freaking nightmare. The rest of the movie is these crazy ass bitches threatening him and blackmailing him. I thought you guys left. His wife FaceTimes him and the girls try to get him in trouble by looking in the background and doing a whole bunch of stuff so that the wife can see. And he has to turn around. Now he's freaking out. Now he's like, oh my God, they're trying to destroy my life. I got to get these girls out of here. Now that my brain is clear. Okay, here's a little bit of advice because I I I've been in this situation too, but it's much easier for guys to do it. If you're in a situation like this where you know something bad's going to happen and you don't have any intention of it happening, go to the bathroom, take a bathroom break, lock yourself in the bathroom and take care of yourself. You'd be surprised how clear you start thinking about the repercussions of your actions once you do that. It's much harder for the succubus to seduce you if that happens. And that's if you failed a very obvious common sense factor that you should have employed before getting to this point. Not letting total strangers into your house. Do you know what you've done? I'm calling the fucking police. Go ahead. <laughs> what the fuck is so funny? I just have a funny story for them. It's called To Catch a Predator. Yep. Yep. And this is the reason why you must think before you stick. Like... I know it's difficult, but think of it as the ultimate test because this is exactly the shit that happens. And especially guys are preyed on a lot when it comes to this. Eventually Evan does get rid of them and goes back, but then they break into his house later and knock him out. Then they tie him up to the bed and blackmail him even more. But it's not even blackmail at this point because they are fully intent on destroying his life. Things get even more messed up at this point. Belle, the blonde girl, is like, let me take your daughter's uniform and her underwear. <laughs> and oh my God, you know, just for the shared joy of this movie, you guys should watch it yourselves. I can't even explain some of the things that they do. It's it's really hot. It's, it's I mean, aside from like the whole his life getting messed up thing, it's a really hot scenario because man, one thing I will give these girls is they know how to have fun and role play. And when you're role playing in the bedroom, you know, no, nothing's off limits, so. It's fucked up, but it's, you know, it's kind of hot at the same time, so. I don't like where this is going. 
We learn why the girls are after him in the first place. I don't know if they're, like, psych people. Like, people who escape from the asylum. I mean, I don't think people escape from the asylum anymore. I think we're past that time where they put people in there without their permission. But your family can still commit you if you don't have all of your nuts and bolts twisted in. What I'm guessing is apparently this girl, I forgot what her name is. This girl probably had a father that ruined her family because he cheated on her mom. Because he's ask, she's asking questions to Evan like, did you think about your family when you decide to do such and such like you did to us? Because he was evoking his family now because they want to kill him. Of course he wasn't thinking about his family at that point in time. I mean, he was up until when it happened. And she's very angry because her father probably did the same thing, which ruined everything. Because just like so many people, he didn't think about the consequence of his actions. And now he has a crazy bitch on his hands. It's a daughter. By the way, speaking of daughter, that is his daughter's underwear in his mouth right now. This movie is all shades of fucked up, I swear to God. <laughs> it gets worse. Lois comes over and they say that they're Evan's nieces. He's here to pick up the art. Somebody touch us? We didn't touch it. It's Ann Karen stuff. We wouldn't go near it. I did see Evan in here earlier. Maybe hit it. This clearly is a very expensive piece of work. And these girls basically marred everything in this house. They ruined all of the wife's stuff, all of her art, and the most expensive pieces. So, of course, Lewis is having a conniption. He takes his asthma inhaler and because he's panicking and starts sucking on it like an oxygen-deprived fish sucking on a freaking carrot. <laughs> Lewis is honestly the one I feel worse for in this entire film. Lewis knows at this point that these girls are not who they say they are, and they realize that they're caught, so they try another tactic, the only one they know how to use. Charm. Hey, Daddy. Heard you needed a new Pokemon, yeah? Mm, I'm the Pokemon you've been looking for. Mm. 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 <laughs> Shut the fuck up! Shut the fuck up, both of you, right now! Nobody fucking move! I'm calling the cops right now. Please, don't tell Karen. One thing I don't understand, if you're gonna call the cops, don't tell them that you're calling the cops. Just call the cops. Or lie. Because people get really weird <laughs> when you tell them you're gonna call the cops. Like, they run or, you know, try to kill you. I know Lewis is panicking, but he should have handled that a little bit better. I mean, he handled it very well, but I'm just saying, like, don't ever do that. Don't tell someone you're going to call the cops unless they're breaking in their house and you want to defect them. I used the wrong word, but whatever. This could be our little secret. Bitch, you barking up the wrong fucking tree. I'm from Oakland, ho! This is great. <laughs> Lewis! Aww. Oh no. Poor Lewis. Uh, God damn it, Lewis. Why are you playing monkey in the middle? Like, you're probably wondering how Lewis died. Well, he was going past the girls to go do his thing and get help. They pickpocketed him and took his inhaler. And they were playing monkey in the middle and he slipped and fell. They deemed it was an accident. Lewis! Genesis, please! This isn't his fault! Please call an ambulance! Help him! <laughs> Bell, please help him! Call an ambulance! I promise I won't say anything! Oh my god. These girls are really the stars of this movie. I swear to god. Keanu Reeves is awesome, and he does really, really well with the awkward bit of not being swayed. This is probably like every person who likes Keanu and has fantasies about him. That's probably their dream. But these girls are the better actors, to be honest. They suck and they're horrible people, but when Keanu's in distress, he just looks hilarious. They pay for Mache Lewis, I don't know why, and then they put him in a truck and say they're gonna call someone because that guy is really good at making people disappear. So they've done this before, obviously, and that person probably is responsible for disposing of all their bodies. They go back to doing the game show and the girls tell him that the punishment for a predator is death. We'll be back after this commercial break. Death? Death? I believe that part when he says that. Then he starts freaking out, which I totally understand, because this guy has been wronged by these people. He doesn't deserve death. Even if he did all that stuff, well, he doesn't deserve death. 
I don't know about the, the child part. That 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 triggers some people, I know. Um, look, as someone who was a product of stuff that happened to me when I was younger, uh, I would not wish death on those people. I just wouldn't. But there are some people who went that it, it ruined their lives. And I can understand, you know, you ruin someone else's life. You don't deserve yours, right? But death is a bit extreme. You're going to kill me. You're gonna fucking kill me! Why? Why? Because I fucked you? I feel so bad for him right here. Oh my god. I really feel for him because these girls are freaking crazy. But I was also laughing at the scene because he kind of Nicolas caged himself right here. You fucked me! You fucked me! You came to my house! You came to me! I got you a car! I brought you your clothes and you took a fucking bubble bath! You wanted it! You wanted it! You came out to me! You've already been told about strangers dressing up in uniforms, but there are other traps you need to know about. Hi, I lost my little dog. Can you help me find him? Be suspicious of an adult asking for help. Where are you suspicious? Or were you big dickus? <laughs> oh my god, this movie was a whole lot of... No. No, don't do it. No. No, don't do it. What was I supposed to do? You sucked my cock. You both fucking sucked my cock. It was free pizza. Free fucking pizza. I mean, if that's the analogy you want to go with, but someone shows up to my house with free pizza, I'm going to be very wary of whoever it is that sent that pizza. For all I know, they put freaking arsenic in it. Don't eat free pizza. That's another stranger danger. Unless you get it straight from the shop. It just shows up at my fucking door. What am I supposed to do? We're flight attendants. Come on, fuck us. <laughs> oh my god. Oh god, this is so uncomfortable to watch. Why am I so red right now? <laughs> Yo, this is... <laughs> I feel I'm like... I don't even know what to say. I'm sorry. I'm supposed to be reviewing this and commenting on it, but I have no idea what to say right now. <laughs> I feel his frustration, kind of, like, what's supposed to be frustration. Oh, God have mercy. Seriously, you guys need to go on Netflix and rent this movie. Or, well, not rent it, but, you know, go on the movie. I mean, you know what I mean? I can't even speak right now. Um, you need to see the whole thing. Like, this, this is a very interesting, interesting movie. Something happens at the end. Does he die? Does he not die? And when he dies, what do they do next? I mean, if they, if he dies, what do they do next? Well, that's something you're gonna have to go find out. I feel like being an asshole, because this is one of those adventures. Whew. <laughs> okay, so my comment about the movie, I already told you guys everything I thought of at the beginning, like how to avoid those situations. It's not like he's a young buck. He's been around, and that, well, I don't know. That, that girl that he's with, he's been with her since he was like in his 20s. So, and he's kept himself pretty, you know, He's walked out of those situations the way that the actor does in real life. And I understand they're trying to make it a message like, this is what happens if you do this. Yeah, that's true. That is true. And the girls are crazy. It does seem like a self-righteous message as people were putting it. Because that's not always what will happen. Sometimes you just lose your family. But I'm not going to put all the blame on the guy. I'm going to be that one idiotic female that people call misogynist because I put some of the blame on his wife as well. Like you... Sometimes for a man to value something, you have to remind him why it's valuable. Like, okay, he he here's a clue. If you have a car, but it's always breaking down or someone else always has it and you never get to drive it. And every time you want to go somewhere, you can't get to go where you need to go because your car is always being used by someone else. What would you do? Would you not get another car? If someone else comes along and like, here's a free car, would you be like, oh no, I have that car already. Or I have a car already. I mean, okay, in the real world, if someone gives you an extra car and it's free, like, you know, take it, you know, but be wary because it might be hot, meaning it might be stolen. But I'm saying like, like when I had my first car, my grandmother gave it to me. It was for a dollar. We traded us a gift to get off on it. That sounds wrong. That's not what I meant. Okay, my grandmother gave me her car, okay? That was my first car, and, and what was I gonna say? No, <laughs> like, I'll just stick with my scooter? No, I took that car, of course I did. But uh, with cars come insurance and responsibility, and if I already have a car, I, I now I have two, but 
why do I want another one? I already have what I need. And it serves me just fine. I love this car. I loved it enough to marry it. This isn't going very well with the analogies. But I hope you get what I'm saying. Like, someone asked me if I need a ride. I don't need a ride because I have a car. But if my car is always being used by somebody else, I'd be like, yeah, you know what? Actually, I do need this other car. And it's very tempting not to take that ride because I really need to get to this place because I haven't gotten to that place in a very long freaking time. So, yeah, bitch, I'll take that car. Why not? So, that, that being said, the wife... If you're gonna leave your husband alone for a long time, um, maybe not leave him sexually frustrated. You know, maybe. Wife comes home later on and she finds all this shit. It could have kind of been avoided. Yeah, he's responsible too because he was an idiot and he let those people inside. But would he have been as thirsty? You know what I'm saying? I don't know. Some people are gonna be like, that's a freaking hot take. You're saying it's... I'm not excusing him from cheating. He's a grown ass man. He knew what he did wrong. He was doing so well fighting them off and he just kept being a pushover to these girls like he was freaking 20 years old. And that's usually what happens when people put themselves in that situation. I know that I would never do something like that because I don't put myself in those situations. And I think ahead of the future. I've been in those situations a lot of times <laughs> in the past or it really, really couldn't be helped. Like when everyone's in the auditorium and it's dark and some dude decides to whip out his whiplash right next to you for some unknown reason. It always feels like in those situations too, those flesh belts are unusually meatier than they normally are. And they're uncomfortable, but all I can think about is hurting the other person. Yeah, this would feel freaking good, and this person is very attractive, and they're saying all the right things and looking all the right ways, but how would it feel to my partner? How would I feel if he did that to me? You know, like, you always, there's just way more to lose than this a few minutes with this other random person. Unless like we make an agreement and we go out and find someone together and we're all clued in, you know? Some people, as they get older, they may want to try stuff like that. Like, you know, just be like, hey, uh, we're a couple and uh, wanna join us? I mean, you know, just to keep things fun and interesting. Not saying I would do that, not saying I wouldn't do that, but unless it's with consent and my partner is okay with it, which she wouldn't be, I wouldn't want to do it because I just care about that person way too much to even risk that. And guys have it a lot harder, I will admit. With girls, we're instinctively able to push off a little bit more in general. I know with some of the girls are like, ew, that's gross. No, somebody touches me and I'm like, whoa, ready to go. My brain is the one that stops me and says, uh, no, the thing that your body's doing right now, don't listen to it because you have someone who loves you very much and that would hurt his feelings. So take all that frustration and take your ass home and go do your thing. But for guys, it's, it's, I feel like it's probably harder for them because they're the ones that biologically with the lizard brain are built to chase and take opportunities because it is harder for guys to get laid. It really is. Rich guys like this one, maybe not so much, but in general, it is. Women have to be more choosy because they have a very small window of reproduction and they have a lot of time to be used. Woman's banged up for nine months while the guy gets to go on and do the same thing to a whole bunch of other girls. So I completely get it, which is why guys have to be even more vigilant when not putting themselves in this situation. Trust me, I told my little brothers that too because especially in the world we're in today where women will just prey on men and do some awful things to them because they want money or whatever. Guys do it too, but I've seen girls doing it more, especially in recent times, because they can. It's more of a reason for you to keep yourself safe. So don't just buck off the message. It is a cautionary tale because there are people out here doing this shit to people. Anyway, I thought you'd enjoy some of that, but then I was going to give you a little bit more, and I'm like, you know what? I think it's something that you guys would like to watch. It is an interesting movie. It's a horrible movie. Like, it's so stupid. It really is a dumbass movie, and it's one of Keanu's worst performances and worst movies, but it's also hilarious and hot. So if anyone else in the comments has watched it already, let us know what you think about it. Thanks so much for watching. This has been Ulturi. You ask, we answer.